Michael's uh, impact on the team and where you've what you've seen out of him the past few years that yeah. he's leaked? Um, you think about the no amount of games that he's now played for the same organization is pretty pretty cool, and it speaks of how he takes care of himself and um, how he approaches the day to day. So, uh, it's a great milestone for him for his family, um, and it's nice that it's kind of tied into our our dad's trip. So I know there's a lot of people around for him. So it's it's a really cool night for him. Would, would it be possible for you to summarize what he means to the team and and the organization, and maybe even the city? Um, I don't know if I can summarize it. Like for for our team, he's been a real good voice in our dressing room, and he's been a, a great example of how you have to play the game night in and night out. Um, in regards to the city, I think everybody knows all the different um, charities that he and his wife are involved in. He takes a real big role, and he's very proud Calgarian, um, and I think that's what makes him. The type of player that you want to have around for sure because he he wants to be a calgary flame he always has and um over the course of the summer he decided that he wanted to stay that way so um he, he means a tremendous amount to this our team for sure and to the, i think the work the city in general any memories from Kelowna stick out um yeah there's a few as a young guy for sure um I mean, well, I remember the hit that he took. That's one that jumps out to the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, Michael Stone ran him over, but he came back like as good as ever. But he, he was a big boost for our team. Um, when we, we had a good team that was pushing to get ourselves to the Mo Memorial Cup, and he was the guy that put us over the edge. And how he fit in right away with his teammates uh, you know, was a pretty good indicator of the type of person that he was and was going to be. You, uh, you coached Mark Giordano as well to see Michael – now move into a tie with him just having coach both guys just kind of what does that mean yeah uh, well it's neat to be around them for sure and even Jerome I know that amount of games that he's played whatever is 12 12 19 or whatever that is um, they all are very similar um, in how they take care of themselves uh, at the rink I mean to start the year Michael's top three in our testing and he is every year so he understands what he has to do to to keep himself um at a high level so every year the players get younger and they get faster and they get stronger and when you're smart like Michael is he knows that he there's a standard that he has to stay to or adhere to and he pushes himself hard to make sure he's ready to play all the time and that's very similar to what we saw from Mark and I'm sure that's exactly the same thing that you saw from Jerome and I'm guessing that Michael learned a lot from Jerome when they played together here. Do you think Michael could take a run at 12-19? Uh, the way he takes care of himself I wouldn't be surprised yeah. Would you mind taking us behind the scenes, Jan? Kuznetsov said you had a meeting with him this morning and said you're going in for your first one. What do you see on the other side of the desk or table when you deliver that news? Well, at first they're like, why am I in here type thing. So they have a different look in their face. And then there's you can see the excitement and, you know, if you want to pride, I guess, you know, he's – He's worked hard for this opportunity. He's done a good job over the last little while for the Wranglers, and he deserves it. So it's nice to see a young man's face when you get to tell him that he's he's going to play his first game. He, uh, he has one of those games, I think, that you know sometimes when you don't notice him, it's a good thing. Like It has to be yeah. very simple. So what what has stuck out to you about what you've seen in his development? Yeah, um, I, I think he has a better understanding of how he has to play as a pro. And maybe his first couple of years, he fought it a little bit at times, but now he really he's starting to figure it out. Where I have to be a, a good checker, a good defender, I have to make a good first pass, um, and then he has to use the size to his advantage. So those are all things over the course of the last number of years he's worked on, and he's gotten better with, and he's put himself in that position where he's getting his first game today. What uh, what are you not seeing enough of from Dylan Dubé? I don't know if it's it's not seeing enough of. Um, you know, he's just he hasn't been the Dylan Dubé that we know that he's capable of being over the last little bit. A lot of that falls on me and the amount of ice time he's had over the last little while, um, but this just gives him a chance to kind of reset himself and then come back better than ever. We know there were some difficult moments with Jacob Markstrom last season, mm -hmm. and it seems as if he's turned a corner. He's put in some really great performances. Analytically, it looks like his numbers have been great too. What's it been like from your vantage point seeing Jacob go about this year and, and, and look so confident and be so reliable for you guys? Uh, well, it's it's nice to see because we've talked before about when he's in net and he's feeling the way he is, you feel like you, you have a chance to win, and if there's the mistake that gets made on the ice, he's going to bail people out. So um, <clears throat> when you go back to the summertime, um, 
my first phone call with him, you knew he was going to come back a different, uh, a different person. So um, we weren't really expecting anything different from him. We know that's the way he is. He's one of the better competitors we have in our dressing room. So he, he deserves a lot of the credit he's got with his play over the last little while. He was edgy. Um, right away, he got to the point, and he was edgy. So, you know, oftentimes when players don't make excuses or there's sometimes there's finger pointing that goes along, there is no finger pointing with him. Uh, and there was an edginess to him that um, when I got off the phone, I'm like, okay, we're going to get a different guy <laughs> coming back this year for sure. Was the guy who was just like, was he taking responsibility? Like, could you, I mean, not, I mean, could you describe it as best as you can? Yeah, what do no. You say? He, he's, he's never a guy that would ever point a finger at someone else ever, and that's what makes him who he is. Can you speak to, I guess, Jacob Peltier's uh, yeah. return and, and his stint now with the Wranglers. Is there a timetable that you're looking forward to or certain, you know, checks or I guess boxes that you're looking to check off before he can come back with the Flames? Boxes, yes, for sure. No timetable as of yet. I mean, he's still just got cleared for contact. So that's the next phase in a practice setting that he's going to get and then hopefully eventually in a game setting and everything keeps progressing in the right direction for him and us. Uh, on Dubé and that fourth line, just what do you need to see more of that trio? It does seem like maybe at times they have lack an identity. How do you see yeah, that? Yeah, that's, that's a good word for it. Is they're, they're guys that we feel should be playing in the offensive zone using their size to their advantage. In Dylan's situation, it's his speed a lot. So um, at the end of the night, you want that line to be a line that's hard to play against and one that doesn't um, step on the ice and, and give up chances against or goals against. Dylan specifically, like you used the term reset. How do you, how do you coach through a reset? Like what what do you how do you guide a guy through that process? Um, you know, a lot of it is the player. I mean, we can have our conversations with them, but it's how they approach it a lot of times. So you can approach it one way or the other way. One way you'll get yourself back sooner than later. The other way it's a little bit of a struggle. So I, I don't think that's any different than any other walk of life when um, you're not where you want to be or, or we're not where we think a player can be. It's, it's, it's really the same. So a lot of it is mentality. You treat a, a game like tonight in the middle of a lot on the road, almost like another road game, or is this uh, kind of fit just as a, another another game on the road? Almost? almost almost like a playoff game for us where we dropped one on the road, now we're coming home where we have to win a game. Uh, that's the way we're going to look at this one today. Take anything out of that Chicago game a couple of nights ago? No. Yeah. Pride night yeah. And what that means to the I, I, I think it's important that we still can continue to celebrate the different groups within our community. I think it's important. Everybody's welcome here. And even though like those jerseys and all the theme night stuff have gone the wayside, um, it means a lot to a lot of people in our dressing room, a lot of our players, and it's something that we'll continue to support.